It's week two of October, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, God, Sir Richard Pitchard's voice is sexy. Why isn't he the Home Secretary? And also, how long will he be making videos on horror games? My answers in order are Criminal Record and Until Dawn on the 1st of November. That's right, tonight we go bumbling about on a mountain in Supermassive's PS4 horror hit Until Dawn. So pop on your puffer jacket, pour yourself a lovely warm glass of WKD, and let's watch some randy teenagers get murdered. The game begins with some randy teenagers having a party in a cabin on top of a mountain. Turns out one of the teenagers, Hannah, is Randy for one of the other teenagers, Mike. So, for some sociopathic reason that's never explained, the rest of the group decide to send Hannah a note from Mike inviting her to bump ugly with him so they can mock her and film her when she arrives. By the way, this is Hannah's house. They are her guests. If I invited someone into my home and they proceeded to spike my Preparation H with Tabasco or trick me into thinking that I was about to meet Steven Seagal, they'd be out the front door with a winkle picker up their anus before they could say fat talentless prick. Hannah is not like me though, so after unbuttoning her shirt she realises that she's been duped and runs out of the house crying into the frozen night. Her twin sister Beth goes after her. She catches up with the distraught Hannah, but unfortunately some unseen creature also catches up and they both leg it to the edge of a cliff before backing off it. Oh, there's a man here. They should be fine now, I'm not too worried. <laughs> One year later. On the anniversary of the twins' untimely prank death, the twins' brother Freddie Mercury decides to invite everyone back to the mountain for another debauched party, and no one considers that this might not be a good idea. I mean, I do throw a shindig on the anniversary of my third wife's death, and I do invite her killers, but to be fair, I did pay them to do it, so it's a slightly different dynamic. Sam arrives on the mountain and makes her way up to the cable car. When she arrives at the station, she bumps into Chris. Now, I reckon he's meant to be about 17. Absolutely no chance. He's definitely 30. He's either a nonce or the result of bad casting. It's hard to tell. Little tangent, the start of this game is slow. So I'm going to make like a barber with cataracts and cut massive chunks out. You're welcome. Chris and Sam head up to the cable car where they find Jess, whose face might be described as mildly unsettling. She's waiting for Mike as she's his new girlfriend. Oh God, what is this? Fucking skins. Mike's old girlfriend, Emily, is also coming to the party with her new boyfriend and oh for god's sake i hate teenagers when are they gonna start being killed emily is a complete dick and matt's a pushover there you go you now know their one personality trait Emily tells Matt to carry the bags up himself like a little bitch because she had to go find Sam. On the way there, he bumps into another teenager, Ashley, who is watching through a telescope as Mike and Emily get a bit too close. Good God, if someone doesn't die soon, I'm going to kill someone myself. Just to be clear, that was a joke. I've never been found guilty of murder or manslaughter despite several attempts. Mike catches up to Jess and they have a flirty snowball fight. You know, that that's it. Something needs to die now. Take that, you feathery little fuck. Oh, I, feel, I feel a little better now. And so do Mike and Jess, apparently, because they go to take a selfie. Uh, all right, one, one sec. Let me just get lined up. What? What? Ah, ah, there we go. Good effort. Next time I get the camera, okay? Piss off, that was perfect. After making it into the lodge, Sam decides to go for a bath and Freddie Mercury convinces Chris and Ash to do a Ouija board. So Sam and Freddie Mercury head into the basement to turn the hot water on when, oh my God, evil monk, finally some peril. Uh, oh, oh, for God's sake, it's the nonce. Oh, stop giving me horror blue balls until dawn. Meanwhile, Emily realises she's left a bag somewhere down on the trail and forces her doormat boyfriend Matt to go with her to get it. Along the way, he suggests copulating on a snowy bench like some kind of reprobate. Seriously, I was a teenager once and I was never this horny or this boring. I spent most of my time bettering myself, you know, throwing avocados at churches, that kind of thing. Anyway, Freddie Mercury and co get down to disturbing some spirits with the Ouija board and what would you know, it starts moving. Oh God, here we go. H, um, Hippocrates, it's Hippocrates, got it, P, P, HP sauce, the spirits eat sauce oh god it always says help okay makes more sense a eh? uh, ass ass problems no no arnie arnie is that you oh it's, oh, it's a warning uh, yeah that, yeah okay eh, s i eh, eh, societus it's got a spectral uti sister oh sister it's got to be hannah or beth oh apparently it's beth okay ashley ask how she died H. It's got to be Hippocrates again. What's he doing? Oh, wait. H A. Hammer? Did someone hammer her? Oh, oh it's spelled it's spelt Hannah. Hannah killed her? Okay. How was Hannah killed? L. 
Le- lemons. Someone killed her with a lemon. I, I, L, I, Listerine. She swallowed Listerine. Wait, B, library? No way. How does someone die in a library? That's just ridiculous. I mean, maybe if a bookcase fell on them. Oh my god, shut up, you dipshit. Oh my god, guys, did you hear that? God, spirits are so touchy. Not my fault you fell off a cliff, you moody twat. Freddie Mercury freaks out and storms off. Don't stop him now, just let him go. Mike and Jess are looking for somewhere to make Whoopi away from prying eyes. They head into a cabin and Jess asks Mike to make it romantic by lighting a fire as they both freeze in the tits off. But wait, she's lost her phone. Ah well, that's probably lost on the trail. No use worrying about it now. Mike and Jess go to Bourne when there's a loud crash. What could that be? Oh, it's Jess's phone. Someone played a music track on it and threw it through the window. I want you to remember that, viewer. Someone threw it through the window after playing a music track. It will be very important later. Jess decides it must be the others trying to interrupt their coitus, so she marches out and loudly announces to the elk and the critters of the mountain that her and Mike are about to exchange bodily fluids. Oh my god, either born or get killed. I can't take much more of this. I mean, uh, boning would have been fine, I guess. Chris and Ash head to the library and find a secret note containing a threatening letter directed at the twins. They go to show Freddie Mercury, but Ashley gets dragged through a door. Go on, Chris, you're the adult here, save her. I'm gonna... Ash? Ash? Oh, uh, yeah, well, uh, you show him, Chris, uh... Chris to the rescue and all that. Mike runs after Jess and sees her get snagged by something nasty. So he goes full action hero to save her. Right, I'm coming, Jess. Oh, oh, God. Oh. Right, okay, we've got to save Jess. Got to save Jess. Oh, fucking tree. Come on, Mike, where is she? Oh, 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 oh God, who put that there? Jessica, where are you? Where are you? Oh, God. Oh, that's winded me. Jessica. Jessica, for fuck's sake, that's going to bruise. Right, I'm going to redeem myself with this jump. Oh, pathetic. That was just simply too far away. No one could have made that. This time, though, oh, my kidneys, my kidneys are mush. Jessica, I'm coming, but my kidneys are mush. Okay, going to risk you slide down. Oh. Mike does catch up with Jessica, but all that wily coyoteing around took its toll and she's had half her face eaten off. No, I was going to eat that face. She disappears down an elevator and Mike heads towards a sanatorium on the hill. Chris recovers from his thwack to the bonds and goes to find his friends. However, eventually he discovers Ashley and Freddie Mercury in a saw trap. They're tied up and over a speaker, the psychopathic killer tells Chris he has to choose one of the two to survive. This is an easy choice. I mean, Freddie Mercury has to survive, right? The show must go on. God, Ash. I'm sorry. Chris, please. Oh, God. Please tell me this is oh. I see. You have chosen to say it from passion. Oh, no, it's just it. It's not like that. Oh. Josh, I'm so sorry. Oh. I didn't mean for this to happen. Oh. 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 Why would you do this? Oh. 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 Well, that was weird. Chris definitely chose to save Freddie Mercury, but he ended up getting bisected anyway. You need to QA your sort of traps, Mr. Psycho. This is really not good enough. I will be reporting this to the murder ombudsman. Chris and Ashley stumble out of the murder shack and into Emily and Matt, who decide it might be time to leave Murder Mountain. Meanwhile, Mike enters the sanatorium and spots an odd man wandering around with some wolves. Then he stumbles across a creepy looking hand rocking back and forth with something dangling from it and decides to grab it. Good thinking, Mike, using your brain there. Mike decides that the best thing to do in this situation is to chop his fingers off. Quick tangent, do you not think it's a bit weird that the two games of this genre that I have made videos about on this channel, the other being Heavy Rain, involve someone having to cut their fingers off? You'd almost think I've got a thing for it, but I don't, honest, it's just a coincidence. Anyway, on a completely unrelated note, if anyone has any recommendations for any other games involving finger-focused self-mutilation, then please let me know, just um, for research purposes and that. Not for masturbation, get that out of your head. After chopping his fingers off, Mike finds a lot of 
corpses, befriends a wolf, and almost accidentally blows himself up. It's been a mixed day for Mike, I reckon. Matt and Emily head to the cable car station. Matt smashes through the door with an axe, but they find that the station has been wrecked and they can't get the cable car. Instead, they decide to head up to a radio tower nearby to call for help. However, before they get there, they're approached by a herd of elk. Oh no, some deer. What a cliffhanger. Remember Sam, by the way? She was having a bath this entire time. Jesus Christ, she must look like an old man's scrotum at this point. She hears something and then realises that her clothes are missing, so she has to wander about wearing a towel as a toga like a Wish.com Roman Emperor. She wanders into the cinema where the psycho shows her a video of her in the bath and then shows her Freddie Mercury getting the world's most effective weight loss treatment. Oh my god, it's a psycho! Sam yeets a vase at him and then legs it. She manages to escape for a while before the psycho catches up with her and drugs her silly. Listen, we've got murderers, drugging teenagers, but let's get back to the real threat here, elk. Matt decides the best way to deal with the threat is to twat the hardest looking elk in the face with his axe to show his dominance. However, the other elks don't take too kindly to this and nudge him gently to his doom. God, how humiliating. Without spoiling anything, when all this is going to be over and the police are figuring out the various causes of death, it's going to be a, oh, what about this one? Oh, he was torn apart by a nightmarish monster. What about this one? Burned to death in a blazing inferno. And him? Elk. Without Matt, Emily makes it to the radio tower herself, but the ranger on the other side says there's a storm and they won't be able to send help until dawn. I love it when games do that. That's why my favourite bit in Resident Evil is the start menu. I switch it off after that, I've gotten all I need. Unfortunately, some nut job cuts the wire holding up the radio tower and it collapses into the snow. I want you to remember that, viewer. Somebody brings the radio tower down, presumably knowing that Emily is in there and might be killed. Chris and Ash are back at the lodge looking for Sam who's gone missing. Whilst they explore, they're pursued by a creepy apparition and find a doll's house portraying the prank that led to Hannah doing a high dive off a cliff. One of the dolls gives them a wink and then they head into another room where the recording of the prank is projected onto the wall, but Ashley does not give two shits about it and is completely unrepentant. This is why I think Until Dawn works. It's a let's see how fast you can get these bellends killed without guilt simulator. It's very therapeutic for someone like me. Really helps keep the demons at bay for a few hours at least. Then the blackouts start up again and suddenly I've broken into Lidl in the middle of the night, again wearing a flat cap and moccasins and nothing else. Wait, how did I get onto this? Uh, oh yeah, so, so Chris and Ash eventually find Sam unconscious in a chair and the psycho takes this opportunity to drug them as well. When they wake up they find themselves tied down with a saw hovering above them. There's a gun on the table and the psycho gives Chris a choice. Shoot Ashley or himself. Well you know what, this is the easiest choice in the game. I've been desperate for a way to get rid of this annoying 30 odd year old nonce for the last six hours so here goes. Boom! <laughs> That's three, maybe four teenagers down by my count. This is going really well so far. Sam wakes up and finds Mike staring at her through a vent. Bit creepy, but he's got a lighter to burn off her restraints, so she lets it slide. She gets changed out of her towel, and then the two of them head towards the sound of crying and despair. If you've ever been to Blackburn, then the sound will be very familiar to you. They enter the room where they find Ashley and, uh, what? Oh, Chris! Oh, for God's sake, why is he not dead? This is like that Christmas where I asked for a wee and got given a jar of piss and a clip round the ear hole. Turns out the bullets were blanks and the psycho was Freddie Mercury all along. What? But that's Radio Gaga. Didn't we see him get torn apart by a saw? Oh, God, more disappointing. Appointment. Emily is also still alive. Oh, can no one die in this game? Are we going to find out that Jess's face wasn't really eaten off and that's just how she looks when she hasn't contoured? Emily finds herself in the mines where she can hear horrendous screeches and the sound of a flamethrower in the distance. She finds Hannah's glasses and stumbles across some marks carved into rock, indicating that someone was living down here. Oh, you know, it's just not conclusive enough. If only we had some hard proof that the twins were here. <laughs> Well, that'll do it. Eventually, this weird man finds Emily and tries to get her to shut up. Seriously, mate, you've got no chance. I've been trying to figure out how to do that for the past six hours. So, back to the big question. Why did Freddie Mercury decide to be deaf on two legs? Well, it turns out it was all an elaborate ruse. He staged the whole thing to punish the other teenagers for what they did to his sisters. It just goes to show that too much love can kill you. Freddie says that no one actually got hurt, but Mike rightly points out that Jess had some very risque impromptu face surgery and then twats him in the face. They tie Freddie up and lead him away. He says he wants to break free, but Mike beats the shit out of him instead. He puts Freddy under pressure to try and get him to confess to murdering Jess, but he denies all knowledge of it. Well, if it wasn't him, then who? Maybe the elk struck again? Emily is caught by the weird man. However, she simply will not stop talking, so he shoves her down a mine chute and throws a bag after her. Very generous. I would have at least set her feet on fire with the flamethrower first. The bag contains some flares, which Emily uses to try and find a way when a bunch of slender pianist fingers try to grab her. There's some weird creatures down here, and by the looks of things, 
might even be worse than the elk. Emily runs up to the lodge screaming and tells the other teenagers about the monsters before there's a knock at the door. It's a weird, strange man from earlier, and he immediately out alphas a lot of them. He tells them that the mountain is home to weird, nightmarish creatures called Wendigos. Basically, if anyone resorts to cannibalism, they turn into a huge humanoid spider-like monster. Bullshit, if that was true, I would have become a Wendigo years ago. The teenagers just immediately believe this man without question, which is a little bit odd, right? Strange man boots his way into a house full of teenagers and they immediately trust him. Oh, and I suppose if he told them he had a GameCube hooked up in the back of his van, they'd immediately pile in. Right, let's pause for a second here, viewer. Now that we've had the denouement and we know that Freddie Mercury faked most of it and that the weirdo is actually a nice weirdo and that the real threat is actually the Wendigo, I have two questions. Who threw Jess's phone through the window? It's pretty clear she got snagged by a Wendigo, so what? Are we to believe these eldritch monstrosities managed to use a touchscreen? Secondly, who cut the ties to the radio tower when Emily was on it? It's clearly a human, but Freddie Mercury was at the lodge and wasn't actually trying to kill anyone, and the weirdo was trying to save them. It makes no sense. Hey, Nancy weirdo, if you need somewhere to park your van, there's a couple of plot holes you can use. Anyway, Mike remembers that Freddie Mercury is tied up on his own somewhere, and despite what he did, friends will be friends, so they have to save him. Chris steps up heroically to volunteer. Wow, Chris is redeeming himself. Oh, and he kissed Ashley. This is lovely. Right, come on, Chris. Show them what you're capable of. Oh! Back! God damn! Heads up! We see Freddy unconscious and being dragged away by a Wendigo. Looks like another one bites of dust. The teenagers decide their best bet is to wait in the basement. Until when you ask? Until morning, I mean dawn! Oh fuck, I fucked it up. However, Mike disagrees and thinks they should go find Freddy Mercury to get the cable car key off him so they can escape. Emily has been bitten. Oh my god, she might turn into a Wendigo. Wait, didn't the stranger say that it was only when someone resorted to cannibalism? Well fuck it, this is too good of an opportunity to pass up. Whoa, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mike, calm down. You're, you're gonna shoot me? Like me? This is the safe room, Em. Please. It is not safe as long as you're in it. Not for us. Don't, don't do that. I'm really sorry. Ah! Ah! Result. Now all we have to do is offer up the body to the Wendigos. Hopefully they'll get so stuffed munching her down that they'll be overfaced by us and leave us alone. I am a genius. But no, Mike heads off and Ashley finds a book that clearly states that the bite is harmless. Oh, whoops. Best just throw that book down a mineshaft or something, Ash. You know, let, let dead teenagers lie and all that. Sam looks at the book and realises that Mike is heading into a whole nest of Wendigos, so her and Ash set off after him. True enough, Mike finds himself scrotum deep in hungry monsters, but a shotgun blast to the face seems to discourage them at least. Then he finds a Wendigo prison. Jesus, what must these Wendigos have done to end up in prison? When standard Wendigo practice is munching people down like Jaffa cakes, maybe it's the Wendigo non-swing? Mike decides his best bet is to blow up the prison, setting all the Wendigos free. Good thinking, Mike. That's some big brain energy you've got going on there. Ash and Sam head to catch up with him when Ashley hears the sound of a girl weeping. Right, Ash, who could that be? You and Sam are the only two females alive. I know Freddie Mercury could hit the high notes and looked really sexy in that one music video, but I don't think it's him. Anyway, she follows the noise to a trapdoor. Now the weirdest thing about this is that Sam doesn't seem to notice or care at all that Ashley is gone. She just carries on despite the fact that they set off together. Honestly, it's a bit off-putting. No one mentions Ashley again for the rest of the game. All I can assume is that Chris was the only one that actually liked her and Sam intentionally lost her in the tunnels. Don't get me wrong, I didn't like her either, but this seems harsh even to me and I routinely throw Satsumas at old women. It's the tartan, I think. I just when I, Whenever I come across it, I see red and sometimes green, I guess. Anyway, Sam and Mike reunite over a burning Wendigo and the two head off to find Freddie Mercury 
Mercury, who is somehow still alive, but he's seeing shit like his dead rotten sisters. Now, I don't know if he's going insane or if it's a kind of magic, but it's a bit incongruous. I mean, what's a giant pig meant to represent? Was Beth halfway through making a bacon butty when Hannah was being pranked? Sam and Mike stumble across a room full of body parts of their friends. Oh look, there's Ashley. Remember, viewer, they don't know Ashley's dead at this point, but it's probably not worth mentioning, is it? They find Freddy, who looks like he's on the verge of a sheer heart attack. Sam decides to climb out of the shaft to go back to the lodge, and Mike agrees to help Freddy Mercury escape via the way they came in. However, they're not walking five minutes when Freddy gets ambushed by a Wendigo with Hannah's tattoo. That's right, Hannah is a Wendigo. She ate her sister, but conveniently left the head. Mike decides this is a family squabble and doesn't bother getting involved. Sam and Mike make it back to the lodge, but it turns out the Wendigos had the same idea because there's an absolute fuck ton of them. Don't. Okay, okay, I won't. Oh, fuck. Mike gets tossed around like a chew toy, but two Wendigos start fighting for no apparent reason, going full John Woo in the process. Oh, look, a gas leak. Come on, guys, this is your chance. Someone has to make it out of here alive. Sick burn, Mike. So yeah, we end up with some Kentucky Fried Wendigos and no one survived. Oh no, what a shame. I really wanted Matt to survive. Damn that elk. I think we know who the real villain of this story was. Okay, that's your lot. It's over. If you like this, then subscribe for some more videos and we will rock you some more. I mean, um, we will be the champion in the bicycle race. Uh, yeah, bye. Mama just killed a man. He got claws upon his head. Didn't press X and now he's dead. Oh, mama, the game had just begun. But that elk just went and tossed mad away.